Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com, and today we're looking at the swing of Tommy Fleetwood in his own words. Hi, I'm Tommy Fleetwood, and today I'm going to detail my iron swing song. This is a seven iron. We're going to start with the setup. Alignment and ball position, I always try and keep pretty neutral for a seven iron. Now there's a lot of interesting stuff in this clip, starting with what he says he keeps the body square. It's really interesting, a tour pro can almost bypass this as a reflex action, but I promise you the number of hours that he's put in in his life and continues to put in in order to maintain what he just simply calls body square is just staggering. And pretty much every club in the bag, it's always a past center. It's always gonna be past the center of my, of my body. That way I try and keep the weight of my feet pretty neutral, so 50-50 on both feet. But I like to have a bit more pressure going left um, with my right hand and right chest. That feels to me like I've got a strike in the golf swing already before I even take it back. Now what Tommy's describing here with his right hand and he says the right side of his chest. So I'm assuming he means his pec muscle and how his upper arm is kind of squeezing inwards up against his chest. This is just his personal version of a forward press. Now a forward press will give you a couple things. As he describes, it's giving him kind of a preview of where he's gonna be at impact with his wrist and arm, but also it will help you overcome inertia so you can make a much smoother takeaway, which also seems to be a very important focus of his swings. Now I advocate also pressing in with the right knee towards the center and the left hip slightly towards the target. And this kind of gives me the feeling of an entire body getting freed up so it doesn't feel immobilized. From there, one of, almost the most important move in the golf swing would be the first part of my takeaway. I have a tendency to lose the takeaway out. And then I, from there, from a foot into my golf swing, all I have to do then is reroute and try and find my way back to the ball. So. First part of the takeaway, take it inside, turns with my body from there. Full turn to the top, I hold my left side, I don't want to lose my left side. And then the first move from the downswing will then be my left hip goes straight back. Straight down that thing, I don't want it to sway. So I want it to go straight back, which then sets the club and from there, turn and hit and pass the ball. All right, let's go back to the most important part of the video where Tommy's swinging in slow motion at the very beginning and especially the impact zone close up because there's a few points here to be considered that I think really where the money is made and where you are going to get the most out of watching him swing. First of all, I want you to notice how close his hands are to his right pocket as the handle passes on its way into the ball. A good golfer will tend to keep the hands closer to the right thigh on the way in. And after impact, the handle and the hands will pass fairly close to the left pocket or the left thigh on their way into the exit. Golfers who tend to struggle with accuracy do not adhere to this what I call the one hand span gap between the thighs through the impact zone but instead they might be double or even triple two hand spans three hand spans and this is really going to make you introduce a lot of extra face rotation in order to get the club face square. Another point you can glean out of watching this slow-mo of the impact zone close up is how opened up his hips and chest are as he arrives at impact. And that's just simply something that amateurs are not quite as good at as somebody like Tommy. But it will be to our advantage as a golfer trying to improve to get your chest and your hips more open at the moment of impact. It's gonna help you 
hit the ball both more powerfully, more accurately, but most importantly, it's going to help you get that forward divot like Tommy is showing here. All right, time for the secret sauce in this video and where Tommy is really at his best. Impact, you can see, as the club makes its last approach into the ball, the handle of the club is leaning forward. However, the club head is actually approaching the grass very shallow, almost like a sweeping blow, but not quite. Very gently downwards with a forward leaning handle. What does this give us? This gives us compression. So what is compression exactly? How do you compress a golf ball the most? Well, given that you're going to hit the ball in the center of the face, but on top of that, compression is just simply a measure of spin loft. Okay, so how do we control the spin loft? What is Tommy doing to control the spin loft on this swing? Well, spin loft is simply the difference between the dynamic loft showing at impact, and then you subtract the angle of attack. So let's say that you have a dynamic loft. This is the loft showing at impact on the club face relative to the ground. Let's say that's 20 degrees, and you've hit downwards on the ball 5 degrees. That's 20 minus a minus 5, which would give you 25 degrees of spin loft. And so that would make a certain amount of compression. Meanwhile, let's say that you lean the club forward more, and you take away 3 degrees of dynamic loft to 17 degrees, but then you come in really sweepy at only, let's say, 3 degrees downwards. 17 minus a minus 3, it gives you 20 degrees of spin loft. And of course, 5 more degrees of spin loft is going to compress the ball significantly more, probably make the ball go farther too. But it's the feeling of compression which really makes us want to come back for more. It is such an amazing feeling to strike a golf ball this way. So just simply do not confuse compressing a golf ball with compressing the turf. It is not about how hard you strike downwards with forward leaning shaft. It's about how sweepy you can make your swing with forward leaning shaft. All right, one last point as we watch Tommy from down the line, and that is how beautifully his swing shallows. Now, how is he doing this? He's doing this by the maintenance of his forward bow at the hips, and he's doing this by rotating his trunk without trying to pull down on the handle, but instead allowing the handle to kind of rotate around with his chest, get it going out around him, and then by hugging the two pockets going through impact and exiting on an arc around to the left, he's getting the club shaft to respond to this shallow and around hand path. He's also adding a little bit of supination of the right forearm as he starts down. And all these things combined are getting that club into a nice shallow position. So, of course, there's a lot of stuff here that Tommy simply can't cover in a two-minute video. But hopefully you'll appreciate me reading between the lines here and giving you a little bit more insight on the strengths of Tommy's swing, why it is such a fantastic golf swing, and maybe what you can focus on to get yourself playing better too. Hey, thanks again for watching. I'm Steve, and as usual, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Everybody take good care.